The Maple Leafs have found their Wes Clark replacement and longtime scouting veteran Mark Leach. What's he all about? We'll get into that and give our top five Leafs prospects on today's Friday Five Pack. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On at Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leafs centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morsuti. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like you want them to. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. What's going on, Dave? How you feeling on a Friday? Not bad. Uh, it's been a very quiet week, so gave decided to do a little cooking tonight. You decided to do some cooking. What'd you cook? I got cook, but like decided to like do a proper setup cook. Well, what'd you make? Made some pasta fagioli. Pasta fagioli, my guy. So Atta good. Boy. Atta boy. I, I, and I did the Italian thing, and I made way too much. Yep. <laughs> so. I might call my cousin like, do you, do you want some? <laughs> I wish I lived closer to you because I would definitely come pick up a bowl and use it for have it for lunch tomorrow. I will, like oh. pasta fajoul next day for lunch. Oh, like when my dad ma- makes it. Oh, so good. I'm jealous. I am well, extremely well, made jealous. It so good too. fresh basil from Nona's garden. Oh, bello, bello. Um, well, there actually was a little bit of news. Like, we don't have to fabricate stuff to talk about on today's show. Yes. There's actually some newsy items when it comes to the Maple Leafs today. Uh, y'all probably remember last week we chatted about how Wes Clark, the director of amateur scouting, uh, left Toronto to go take a job with the Pittsburgh Penguins and rejoin Kyle Dubas. And we thought, well, who's going to replace Wes Clark? What are the Leafs going to do for their director scouting position well they filled that position with longtime scouting veteran mark leach um i think it's a pretty good hire uh you know mark leach has been in the game for a very long time he's a bit of an older cat so veteran is 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 uh, is an understatement 62 years old um and he spent a lot of time with two very successful drafting organizations um he spent a lot of time with the detroit red wings through the 90s and 2000s through their most successful era and then you know has spent the last 11 years with the dallas stars we always talk about how well the dallas stars draft and develop well this guy's in the meetings he's in the rooms and he's one of the the key guys part of that scouting staff and now he's on the maple leaf staff i at least did a pretty good job uh getting their west clark replacement here and mark leach yeah, as soon as I as soon as I saw he spent the last eleven years in Dallas, I'm like, oh, this is this is looking good. <laughs> like, sign me up, yeah. sign me up. <laughs> yep, and it's just, and then you see not just his time with the Stars, and you saw his time with the Red Wings. Like, no offense to the Red Wings, like the Red Wings really started a bit of their decline when Jim Neal left the organization because he took guys like Leach and and he's not even he wasn't there the stars uh scouting director um i, I actually no, the joe name, really. uh joe mcdonald his, yeah his joe mcdonald but he was like, like the number two like he was yeah. second in command underneath mcdonald like those like like yeah leach was pretty much like at the table help like he prepare help prepare those drafts and like what reason why i know a lot of people probably say oh like this is what's like what's the big deal like this is someone who has a track record going past like not just 11 years we're talking a couple of decades yeah right? oh yeah i mean so this guy started scouting with the detroit red wings in 1994 that was after he played collegiate uh and ncaa hockey he tried his hand at as an assistant coach uh in in the in the league um, but really started scouting in 1994. Like that's that's the year you and I were born, Dave. He's been at this job as long as we've been alive. Dave. So uh, that's why I said veteran is a bit of an under an understatement. He's been at this game for a long time. And think about it, right? 1994 to 2013 for the for the 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 Detroit Wings. 
think all the gems that came from Detroit in those years, right? The Pavel Datsuks, the Henrik Zetterbergs, the 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 the, the Clearies, like they they just Nick found Lidstrom. so many. Nick Lidstrom, ah, uh, Lidstrom would have been before that. I'm I'm pretty sure Lidstrom was early '90s, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, um, still a lot of really, really good, talented players that, you know, they mined and allowed that team to win, what, three Stanley Cups uh, in that time span while he was there with the team. Um, so pretty successful, uh, you know, start to his scouting career. And then you mentioned it. Jim Nill says, all right, I'm taking a job in Det- in Dallas. So he takes a couple of guys who he feels can help round out the staff there. and. Mark Leach was one of them, right? So he took Mark Leach from Dallas, uh, from Detroit to Dallas. Both of these teams, starting with D, is, is killing me right now. Um, <laughs> and he's been there ever since. And like when we look at Dallas's draft history over the last few years, like you know, it's it's pretty spectacular. Here, actually, I have it pulled up. What what uh, their draft classes in the last like decade, and it's pretty pretty stellar uh, if we take a look at it. So. Um, let's go back to, I guess, when they really started to to hit the ground running. I mean, they, they took over in 2014, not the greatest, but that's when they took over. They got Rupe Hints with the 49th overall pick, a solid selection there in the second round. He's had a terrific career so far uh, with the Dallas Stars. They end up getting another Really solid draft here that really set the foundation of their draft in 2017. They got Miro Heiskanen, Jake Ottinger, and Jason Robertson all in the same draft. Robertson, 39th overall, a second-round pick, and he's turned out to to be one of the best scorers in that draft class. Uh, and then obviously you can't forget about the you know Thomas Harley, who they selected in 2019 in the first round. He's turned out to be an excellent stud defenseman for them. And then they've been able to churn out some other good players like Maverick Bork is seasoning in the minors right now. He's ready to come up next year. I think Maverick Bork is going to be a player that is going to be on the radar of some teams like rookie. Solid, solid rookie next season. And then 2021, another banger of a draft for them, getting Wyatt Johnson and Logan Stankoven with the first and second round picks. So, you know, they hit on their top picks. They just seem to hit. They've got a good idea of what uh, good players and good teams, um, good players are, good draft picks, good prospects. And they've turned out a pretty solid few draft classes there that have really set the foundation of the Dallas Stars. So hopefully he could bring that wisdom and 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 that scouting eye to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, you look at why Dallas has been able not only to be competitive for uh for so long and why they're kind of viewed as like the the team to really watch out for is because they got it's the blend of they go and get players at the deadline even if they trade away picks, but they got guys coming in at like you know Stan Coven and why Johnson, what they added to it already, as you said, pre- like great draft class from 2018, even mm-hmm. like prior to that, like even Ty Delandria, like yeah. guys like that who really, you know, those are pretty big names when you consider, you know, how tough it is really to hit on picks. We don't always have, you know, top five picks like, okay, Miro Heiskanen. Usually when you have a top five pick, that's a little, you know, you're it's a little more of a sure thing right but it's that ability and this has been the leafs issue right it's the leafs issue has been finding those guys outside of you know the top tens right now we started to see a little bit of that under west clark when you had matthew nice and easton cowan right you start you start to see the value with some of those picks but it's it's the the inability in past years for Leafs to really um, take advantage of that. I think that's really had set them back in their ability to really push forward. Like even if you look at other organizations, I look at like Tampa Bay. Like that's a team that always found a way to find value, even when they didn't have the yeah. first round picks. And I think that's yeah. why, yes, losing Wes Clark hurts because we saw what he was able to do in that short period with limited picks. So. That's I think the Leafs are they realize we got to go and get someone we got to find someone that's you know able to do that. I'm 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 a little surprised that they were able to get get Leach. Obviously, there's probably a, a 
there's probably a, a nice little hey you get to now run the draft like you get to run the show it's your show i'm sure he was doing that in dallas but like he is now like the top top guy i think that's yeah, something right. that you can't say no to it's a promotion right like he was the number two right um it, jim neil was the gm and the director of player scouting was joe mcdonald and then you had Mark Leach as like one of the head scouts. Well, now he's the director of amateur scouting. Like that's it's a, a legitimate uh, uh, promotion that he's getting here. So, you know, there's there's things in place in the NHL where if you do want to take somebody off of another team, you know, it's got to be a promotion. It can't be a lateral move. So, you know, going from being, you know, a head scout to a director of amateur scouting, big time uh, move up the chain for Mark Leach. And it, it took him a long time to get there. Like he's 62 years old. It's not a, he's not a spring chicken. That's for sure. But uh, again, hopefully he can uh, bring the wisdom, the long-term wisdom that he had, that he built from those days in Detroit, the days in Dallas. And hopefully, uh, you know, Maple Leafs, they don't have a lot of draft picks, so they got to hit when they get them. So hopefully Mark Leach uh, and the staff that he's going to build, um, you know, can help do that for Toronto moving forward. Uh, that being said, part of our Friday five pack is going to be a power ranking of the Maple Leafs current top prospects. So we'll get to that on the other side. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay. Pat and driving patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay does everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. When they're to speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, is your burn and rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back into the Locked On at Least podcast. Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti with you as we are each and every weekday here on the Locked On Least pod. You can find it wherever you get your podcast at and also up on YouTube as well for the video version of the pod. So uh, what we've been doing, uh, which we started last week, so I guess you know, been doing is, is not necessarily a, you know, a, a term that holds a lot of weight there. But what we are going to continue doing uh, each Friday throughout the offseason is a little Friday five pack, a fun little power ranking, five unit power ranking uh, each and every Friday throughout the rest of the summer. So today in, you know, uh, correspondence with talking about the new hiring of the director of player scouting, uh, Mark Leach. I thought it'd be kind of a good idea to take a look at, all right, well, who are the current top prospects for the Toronto Maple Leafs? We never officially did a uh, top prospects list after the draft, an updated prospects list. So I think right now, honestly, it is a perfect time to do that, to kind of marry it with the news of uh, of the brand new director of amateur scouting. So let's start things off. Uh, we have a cumulative, cumulative list here. Both of us have uh, decided that this list is, is, uh, is, is what we're going with for the locked on lease podcast. It is that ranking. Um, do you want to go, do we go one through five or do we go five through one on this Dave? Let's go one through five. I think, I think most people will know who will be number one on the list. Yeah, we'll start up at the top. Why not? We don't need to. We don't need to to, to bury the lead here. It's it's going to be Easton Cowan. Obviously, the Maple Leafs first round pick a couple of years ago took him twenty seventh overall from reach to MVP. We all know the story. Uh, had thirty four goals, sixty two assists for ninety six points. He had like a thirty six game point streak in the OHL this year. He won MVP in the regular season. He won MVP in the playoffs. The OHL championship uh, was uh, was was his uh, with the London Knights. Um, it was just a fantastic season that almost was a perfect season. Nearly, nearly finished it off with winning a Memorial Cup, but uh, came up just a little bit short. But Easton Cowan is a player that a lot of people have their eyes on as uh, as a real top talent for the Maple Leafs 
in the future. We heard really good things coming out of Haley Wickenheiser this past development camp about how she thinks, you know, the, the, the strides that Cowan has taken from last year's development camp is massive and that she believes he'll make an impact with the Maple Leafs at some point. So he's by far and away the Leafs' top prospect um, and one of the top prospects in the game today. Yeah, what I like about him is he's not just a guy that goes and tries to be an offensive player. That's obviously his bread and butter. He is used in all situations. It's it, This is just like a like a London Knight factory player, in my opinion, like a guy that can kind of do everything. When we talk about like why we think he could play NHL games, it's because he is capable of playing in those other roles, right? If you wanted to play on the penalty kill, he could play the penalty kill because he did that with um, with London. If you want to play him on the power play, he could do that too. I know he did play some time at center. I don't I don't expect him to play center in the in the NHL, but the Leafs might even give him a shot. See if he could play a little center because that versatility I think is what what can really help his value increase even more. But yeah, I think there's a lot of reason to be excited about Easton Cowan. And I'm he's gonna be like one of my top players to watch like when training camp opens because there's gonna be a lot of eyes on him. Oh yeah. That's that that's a fry five pack down the road, pal. Five players to watch in training camp. You're right. Let's <laughs> let's pencil it in for August at some point. Um, yeah, so one hundred percent Easton Cowan is the number one prospect. Uh the number two prospect, there's a little bit more debate here uh in, in who you could put at number two. Um, but I think that Fraser Minton should still hold that mantle as the second best prospect in the Maple Leafs pipeline. Um, I mean, this is a guy who won a job at a camp. He had an opportunity to play a handful of games at the NHL level last year. Obviously, did not go so well. He wasn't ready, so they sent him back to the WHL. Um, and, you know, he had a pretty good year, 22 goals, 26 assists, 48 points. He was the captain for Team Canada at the World Juniors. And he, he's not going to be known for his offensive flair. Like, Fraser Minton, you know, we believe is is being groomed to be like a top shutdown center. You know, like a two-way, a two-way center but he's going to definitely be, you know, more relied upon in, in a defensive role for the most part. So, you know, the fact that he doesn't have the offensive numbers that Cowan had uh, doesn't really scare me all that much. I don't think that's part of his game necessarily, but I still think that he's going to be a, an excellent kind of middle six center option for the Maple Leafs down the line. And currently the least number two prospect. Yeah, one thing that when I was looking back at the uh, development camp, like Haley Wickenheiser always lauds to his maturity mm -hmm. in his game, and that was something even the year before. A lot of people were really impressed with his approach. Um, you know, he took big steps last year, even though when he got traded uh, midseason. Right, I think that, uh, you just see where – He's not going to be the flashiest prospect, but he is going to do. He's not. He's going to do the right things. So last year, obviously, you know, it was maybe a little too much to throw at him right away when you gave him the nine games. But I feel like that was such valuable experience for him to just understand what he needed to work on, what he needed to do to one day be that everyday NHL NHL player. And I think that's even if it's a third line guy. You you take that because guess what the Leafs have a serious hole right now at third line center. If you're someone like Fraser Minton, you should say grab I want to do whatever I can to grab that spot, and I would love nothing more than to see him do it. Now, would you like to put all that on a guy who's so young? You know what? Other teams are doing it. <laughs> it's not something new. Teams find a way to get their young guys involved, and I'm curious to see how this coaching staff. Now we'll approach, take that approach with someone like a Fraser Minton. Yeah, completely agree. It, it'd be a great story if he were to win that job out of camp and, and solidify himself as an NHLer and, and, you know, fill that hole at three C that, uh, that the Maple Leafs desperately need filled. So uh, we'll see what he can end up doing. Uh, number three on the list, Ben Danford. So this is the one where I think we were like, uh, uh, Danford, Minton, who who should get the the nod? But I think Minton was the right call. But then Danford, really like a 2B at this point. He was the Maple Leafs' first-round pick they selected 
uh, in this past draft. Not really an overly offensive guy. Just one goal this past season had 33 points. A lot of scouts I've talked to, though, believe that there are uh, more offensive. There is more offensive upside to his game that should develop in due time. They believe he can be a bit of a two way guy. Um, but he's just a big body who loves to throw himself in front of pucks. Really smart, smooth skater. Um, you know, so Ben Danford is a guy who the Maple Leafs look at and, and hope that he could be a fixture in the top four at some point uh, for for this team for a long time. And he's currently the number three prospect. Yeah, again, during the development camp, if you watched that scrimmage, you saw there was a little more of a desire from him to show what he can do offensively. And and Haley Wickenheiser also noted, uh, reading back on him, obviously he showed a little more of what he can do offensively than what the stats show, but also off the ice. He's, mm-hmm. a, like she said, a good athlete. So he's got those good habits off the ice that at 18 years old, especially as a defenseman, those are those are some traits that you want to see uh, from a guy that young. And I, I again, he he'll be the guy to watch in juniors this year if you're uh, if you're looking to watch a guy like him and see how he grows into that role. Maybe he shows a little more offense this year with uh, with the generals. So I'm, I'm yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah, I, I'm I'm I am too because I think Ben Dan like he's the he's the guy that the Maple Leafs need to hit right? Like uh, of players that need to hit, this is what they need. They need a top four steady Eddie right shot defenseman who could skate, who can defend and essentially maybe eventually be that Chris Tanev replacement, right? Um, For, for one Tanev eventually, you know, hangs him up or at the end of that, that contract or whenever he decides he's done um, if it's before the six years. So Ben Damper, definitely someone who could go in there and Hey, he was rubbing shoulders and and picking the brain of a guy like Jake Muzzin too, you know, and that's kind of maybe what the Leafs are hoping Damper can turn, can turn into um, Jake Muzzin who underratedly, Decent puck mover, not a big point getter, but a good puck mover. Um, so they're hoping Danford can pick pick the brain of uh, of him and maybe you know turn those into those offensive skills uh, into um, have that come to fruition. There's the word I was looking for. All right, who are prospects number four and five on the Lockdown Lease Prospect Power Ranking? Well, you'll have to wait just a moment because it's coming up on the other side. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from receipt, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. They've got last minute deals where you can save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, for concerts, for comedy, for theater. For wrestling, even I know a lot of people. A couple weeks ago, here in Toronto, got some cheap tickets using uh, using Game Time to get themselves some tickets to the live event that was happening at the Scotia Bank Arena. Uh, they've got flash deals, they've got zone deals, they've got seat views, uh, and the lowest price guarantee or Game Time will credit you 110 percent of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. The Locked On Lease podcast continues as we continue our Friday five pack here. Uh, it's Mike DiStefano, Dave Morissuti with you. Uh, so to recap the top three so far, uh, pretty chalky answers. I would say from us, a pretty chalk top three, you got Easton Cowan coming in as a Leafs top prospect, Fraser Minton, the number two prospect in the Maple Leafs pipeline. And then their 2024 first round pick Ben Danford, the big right-handed defenseman, uh, as the third best prospect for the Toronto Maple Leafs. A couple of interesting players coming in, uh, the rest before we get to number four and five, I want to throw out the honorable mention. Um, because it may surprise people that he didn't make the list, uh, because it's Topi Nimala. Uh, for a while, Nimala was one of the better defensemen in this prospect pool. Uh, for a while, he's considered top five, top three 
prospect even for the Maple Leafs. But, uh, you know, he's getting to a point now where it's been a few years since he's been drafted. He did have a decent season in the AHL, eight goals, 21 uh, assists. Um, it was an okay season for him. I still wonder about the size uh, when it comes to Topi Nimala, but I think he's lost a little bit of shine to the the prospect rankings and it seems like some guys are just starting to jump him. And when they needed players to come up and play some NHL minutes, Topi never got the call. And I think that that says something uh, to, to, to me, at least it does. So uh, not to say that he can't develop like this. He's still learning the North American game, obviously. And he's still relatively young where he can figure it out. I think he's only what, 22 years old. He's not, he's not an old prospect by any, any stretch of the imagination. But uh, to me, I think a couple other players have surpassed him in the prospect pool. And he's now considered an honorable mention for me, just on the outside, looking into the top five. Yeah, we just really haven't heard a lot about him, right? He he had a decent season in his first full year in uh, in the AHL, but again, you're you're looking at guys you're trying to get out of the first round to really step up and be something for you. The fact that, as you mentioned, that he didn't play in the NHL games last year kind of shows maybe the team feels there's areas he needs still still needs to work on. You know, he's not the biggest you know player so size is something that i'm sure the management is uh keen you know keen on making sure that he can handle playing in the nhl because we know that that's something that when you're a a small defenseman that is that is a tough transition there but you know i i defensemen do always take a little longer i do i will admit that i think he's gonna be 22 this year Mm -hmm. so like this is roughly around the time where you want to see him start to make don't you know, take a little bit of a step forward. I know he's really been working on the two-way game, not just to be a points guy, but you know, I, I thought maybe he would have been a, a little further along and that maybe would have seen him play a game, at least a game or two when the Leafs were dealing with injuries on the blue line and we didn't see it. So clearly a little bit more work to do and how much time can you really wait? And the same goes with Ronan Hirbanen. I think mean, like those two guys are kind of in the same boat where it's like, yeah, they might be more of the two way type of players. Like, where are they? (laughs) Like, we want to see, we want to see those guys who played a lot of pro hockey in Finland eventually, you know, factor into trying to make this NHL roster. Yeah. Here in uh, a little bit down the, the prospect rankings compared to where he used to be for sure. All right, let's get to number four and five here on our, Locked on leaves of prospect rankings. Number four might surprise some people because I don't, I don't think a lot of people are aware of the rise. I don't want to call it meteoric rise, but like the, 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 the big leap that Nikita Grabankin took in the KHL this past season, the Russian winger prospect that, uh, that they were able to draft uh, a few years ago. I think he was a fifth round pick back in 2022, I want to say. Let me just double check that. Uh, I believe it was 2022. Yeah, fifth round pick in 2022, 135th overall. And it looks like they actually found a pretty good one. Now, again, got to see what it looks like you know, on North American ice, but um, last year with uh, Magnetogorsk at just 20 years old. And keep in mind, KHL, it's not the best place to develop. and They don't typically allow young players, especially ones who are committed to come back coming back to North America. Um, they don't really give them much ice time, but as a 20 year old with Magnetic Horse this season, uh, Nikita Grabankin had 19 goals, 22 assists and 41 points in 67 games. So uh, a really successful season for Grabankin. And he's, he's got a bit of size to him, six foot two, 190 pounds. So he's got, you know, NHL size and uh, 21 years old. Now he played at age 20, uh, turned 21 back in May. So uh, Grabankin to me is a guy who's kind of rocketed up the prospect rankings quite a bit. I think uh, he's coming. He, he's in North America now. I believe he's going to be playing mm-hmm. for the Marlies this season. And he's going to be someone, you know, we talk about you're going to want to keep your eyes on Ben Danford and the Oshawa Generals. I want to be watching some Nikita Grabankin with the Marlies this year because uh, I don't think he's too far away from uh, getting a sniff in, in the show either. Yeah. Like, he was the KHL Rookie of the Year in 2023. Mm-hmm. Um, Won the, the championship, year. too. 
They won the title. He won the that cha- year. So yeah, so two years ago he wins the rookie of the year. Last year he wins or this or sorry. Last year he wins rookie of the year. This past year he wins the uh KHL title. Then he gets signed to his ELC, I think like not too long after that. So we already know, yeah, he's coming over. And we had the conversation the other day about how the Leafs don't exactly have a lot of left wingers, um, you know, on the roster. This is someone now. I don't think it's going to happen this year. It could if he dec- if he really shows a lot of promise during training camp and a few games with the Marlies. But this is a player that one day the hope, the potential is that he could be, you know, maybe at worst a second line left winger for this team. That's where you gotta you gotta take some chances on these players later in the draft. They did with Grabankin. I think this is someone that down the road you're gonna say a really good job by the scouting staff to find someone like that late in the draft. Um, finding a fifth round pick to play in the NHL and play solid minutes, pretty. I think that's a pretty good job. And again, he's got good size, six foot two, hundred ninety five pounds. Pretty good size, and uh, mm-hmm. and he uses it. So that's what I like about him. Yeah, and, and there was also uh, a buy-in to his defensive game this year, too, yeah. to allow him to be a little bit more of a 200-foot guy. I think last year, uh, reading some some scattering reports, he he focused a little bit too much on offense. This year, really dialed it in and, and tried to commit to a 200-foot game, and that's helped him sell and, and eventually get in the NHL. So uh, that's why I've got Nikita Grabankin rocketing into the top four of our Locked On Leafs prospect rankings. And coming in at number five, we're going to the crease here, Dave. Dennis Hildeby, uh, another bit of, you know, an older prospect, I guess you could call him. Uh, he was drafted as a, a double overager a couple of years ago. Uh, had his first season over in North America playing for the Toronto Marlies this past year. A 913 save percentage of 241 goals against. Um, and he technically got a call up technically, uh, but did not play any games for the Toronto Maple Leafs. But at 22 years old, he's got good size. Obviously, he's an absolute mammoth. He's a tall, tall human at six foot seven, uh, 225 pounds. He's a big boy in that net. And that's kind of where, you know, the, the, the position is skewing to big mammoths in the crease. And he's coming off a monstrous year in the AHL after a couple of uh, fantastic seasons uh, in the SHL. Uh, with Farstat. So uh, I'm excited to see the development and progression of Dennis Hildeby. They finally were able to develop a, a goaltender with Joseph Wall. Let's see if they can continue that with a Dennis Hildeby, uh, who will, I'm guessing, be the starter and get a bulk of the games down in the American League with the Marlies as well. Yeah, he he was he came right out of the gate this year. And he went on like a like a on a streak where he not, he couldn't lose. And yeah. if, like he was putting up like ridiculous numbers. Now, the thing is, is the big, ch- the big challenge for these goaltenders when they come to North America from Sweden, is you got to play a more of a rigorous schedule, right? They're playing more games. So I, yeah. as the year went along, he, he did notice there was a dip in his production, but he also set the Marley's rookie record for wins in a year by a goaltender with 20. <laughs> you want to know who he beat up for that one? We talked Joseph about him Wall. yesterday. Justin Pogi. Oh, Justin Pogi. Right so, on. Nice. So what does that say? It, like, this is from 2000. Like, Pogi had this record from 2006, 2007. Yeah, so the Leafs, Leafs suck at developing. That's The that Leafs have not me. had a goaltender. Like, if you think about it, the Leafs have not had a young goaltender. Now we're talking about a rookie goaltender come in and, and hit that 20-win plateau. He did it in 38 games. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there, there's some more. There was, you know, you did notice, especially in the playoffs, he didn't have his best. But I think that's a learning. I, I think like he he All had a lot thrown too. at him. Like it's 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 one yeah. it's a three game sample size. Yeah, right. He had a lot thrown at him as a rookie goaltender. Like we, yes, he's a bit older than mo- some goaltenders because he was a double overager when he was drafted. 22 but, right now 22 years old which that's like when you consider some of these other goaltenders when they come through professional hockey it's not that far off right no you know that, that's that's still relatively young i mean most goalies yeah. don't really break into the nhl until 
like they're 25, 26, like maybe 24, but most goalies at 22 are not in the NHL. So the fact that this guy, you know, is, is kind of on the doorstep, I think is just goes to show how good of a player he actually is. So that's, that's a positive for the Maple Leafs. Uh, I would say Noah Chadwick is probably another guy who was on the outside looking in, yeah. you know, for the Lethbridge Hurricanes, had a great season with them this year, uh, really developed his two-way game, had 56 points in 66 games for uh, for Lethbridge. I think he was named the, was he the WHL Defenseman of the Year? He's named first team WHL Defenseman. He, he had a mm-hmm. tremendous, tremendous year. Um, is there anyone else who you think deserves an honorable mention uh, as one of the the you know top up and coming prospects for the Maple Leafs, I look at a guy like Nicholas Moldenauer, mm-hmm. a guy yeah. that a lot of people liked coming out of the draft. You know, had a pretty decent year at the University of Michigan, which that's a tough program to you know grab Get an opportunity, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like so, and 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 again, his two two hundred foot game is something a lot of people had loud about, you know. And that's why the Leafs really liked him when they drafted him. And I'm going to also put, I mean, talk about goaltenders, Arthur Aktinyamov. Mm, big year like, in the KHL this past season. Yeah. Like you looking at the Leafs crease in terms of prospects and the, the minors, they needed that ECHL affiliate because they got quite a few goaltenders that they're going to throw into there between Aktinyamov, you got Hildeby, you got. I think Pexa's in that mix too. And then yep. uh, I'm missing. Well, Matt Long Murray is going to be in the mix as well. Yeah, Back there's Matt Murray. Team. And who is the other goaltender with the Marlies that I'm blanking on right now? Um, Dryden McKay. No, I think they moved on from him. No, he's he's no longer there anymore. Um, I'm blanking. I'm blanking here, brother. They signed him as an undrafted player, and then he eventually got an NHL deal. Petrozelli. Yeah, Keith Petruzzelli. I don't know if he's with the... Is he still with the team? I, I have no idea. I think he signed a, an entry-level deal, so I think he is still in the mix. Hmm. Okay. I I'd imagine he's that. ECHL bound at that point then. Um, yeah. But at one point, he was he was the backup for the Maple Leafs because they were so depleted. <laughs> he had to back up... Uh, I think it was Samsonov. It must have been at the time. Or maybe it was Joseph. They had Wall. they had to yeah. sign him to an ELC. Like he was he was signed to an AHL deal, so they had to sign him to an ELC. That's right. They had to find a way to make a contract space for him, so they like terminated another player's deal just to make it work. That's right. That is correct. Yeah, wild. I think it was like through COVID stuff and injuries and. Yeah, that was an that was, that was an interesting uh, interesting little hurdle. Petru Zelly, my, I don't know if he is still signed. Um, I have to double check that one because we don't have cap friendly anymore. So, I know. so upsetting. Got to find out. Uh, uh, I saw a new one actually pop up. Wages, there, cap wages, cap wages is the other one. Um, it's like a copycat cap friendly, but they only have like the rosters. They don't have yeah, like the money that was much. But I think right now I'm actually just put put brought up cap wages. They have three in the minors with Acting Yama, Pexa, and Hildeby. So even if you add Matt Murray there, that's four goaltenders that you're gonna have to shuffle Fine. around. Yeah. Well, we'll see what they end up doing. Um, so it's not a completely barren cupboard. There are some prospects that the Maple Leafs have been able to draft over the last couple of years. Um, we'll see what they can do. They're just prospects right now. Uh, and hopefully we, 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 we hope they can turn out to be, you know, solid players and contributors to the big club at some point. Uh, but you know, we'll see what happens. All right. That's going to do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at the underscore Morris. You can follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. We'll be back. With another episode for you guys on Monday. Enjoy your weekends, everybody. Uh, until then, keep a lot right here on Lockdown Leafs.